When you set your mind and heart on an intention, you can accomplish anything. I really believe that you are a genius, but you just need a wiser structure. So I am launching a six month coaching program to help you create that structure. That structure will look like having an optimal calendar and to-do list that helps you get really clear about your weekly priorities and your daily priorities as related to your monthly and yearly priorities. And that's where I think a lot of us, especially those of us who are growing a business, tend to get stuck, is that we spend a lot of our mental energies trying to decide what is the best thing to do. And that's what this coaching program will help you clarify on a daily basis. And that's why we need six months together so that I can coach you through all of that. It's a group program, which means that you get to learn from a lot of the other people in the group. People will be sharing their structures with all of us so that you can see, ah, okay. So for someone with a similar business, this is their structure. We are only a few days into the launch. And as of this recording, there are already 21 people who have started the onboarding process. So if you are someone who is, has been struggling with either getting really clear about the priorities to grow your business on a daily or weekly basis, or maybe you have the priorities, but you haven't gotten the consistency, you haven't gotten the joyful self-discipline to consistently, for example, create content, to consistently launch your offers in a gentle and structured way, to consistently do outreach for your referral sources and enrollments, et cetera, et cetera. If either priorities or consistency has been your struggle, lack of clarity on priorities or lack of self-discipline in your consistency, that's what this program has been designed to do. It's called TLC, which is Thoughtful Life Calendaring. Or another way of thinking about it is TLC means tender, loving care for your boundaries, your structure, and your purpose. All right, so let me first share with you, I'm going to kind of give you a bit of a backstory for why I'm so passionate about this. I'm actually a rebel at heart. Now, a lot of you might say, well, George, uh, knowing you, you are so structured, you are so disciplined, you are so consistent with your content, with your offerings, with showing up for your clients, etc. You're so disciplined. Well, I wasn't always this way. Growing up, I actually hated school. I really disliked getting up in the morning to go to classes. I really uh, felt traumatized by homework assignments. I often stayed up all night finishing a paper that, you know, and turning in the very last minute or even asking for extensions. And I was also, as a kid, forced to learn piano and violin. And well, I'm, you know, privileged to have had parents that, you know, paid for those lessons, but I hated practicing. So it was a, a big waste of their money and, and time you know, forcing me to practice. And I would practice like half an hour a week. It was really pitiful. I was supposed to practice an hour a day, at least on, on these things. And I practiced like at 30 to 60 minutes a week. Uh, it was just so painful every time I had to make myself practice a musical instrument or to do my homework. And what I would prefer to do, which I did a lot, was play video games. You know, I grew up in the age where computers were starting to become more and more sophisticated. And I got really into video games and I would play them at night. I would go to sleep too late. I would wake up. I would, I would be so tired. So I, most of my childhood and my young adulthood was very undisciplined. And I just, I, I struggled a lot. And I, and, I, and I knew that the main thing holding me back from success and reaching my goals was myself. And maybe you feel the same way too. Like the, the biggest block to your success is not somebody else or it's not society, it's yourself. Because you know that your potential is huge. If only you could be disciplined. 
If only you could be consistent. If only you could be clear and calm and have a very uh, spacious life to meet, to work your goals, you know that you could be successful. But what's lacking is a wiser structure. So, uh, you know, one more thing I, I, I want to mention is that, um, you know, not only is being undisciplined bad for not being able to reach our goals, at first, being undisciplined is really foundationally, it's bad for your self care, right? So, because when you're not disciplined, when you're not consistent, when you don't have a good relationship with boundaries, boundaries with other people and with yourself, then you don't get regular sleep or you don't get to sleep regularly on time. Uh, you might not be disciplined about taking naps. I take three naps a day. It's true, sometimes four naps a day. And I am disciplined about taking naps. Taking naps for me is a really important part of productivity. Okay, really important. Now, some of you may not be able to take naps. It's interesting. Even the people who say, oh, I can't take naps. Every time I take a nap, it needs to be 90 minutes or two hours. That's not true. It's because you're not disciplined about waking up after 20 or 25 minutes and realizing, oh, I can do it. It's a practice. Of course, it's not natural for you. If I, if I took a nap and allowed myself to keep napping, it would be two hours and I would feel groggy the rest of the day and I wouldn't be able to sleep very well that night. It's natural, of course. But I trained myself to wake up when the alarm tells me to wake up after 20, 25 minutes. 25 minutes is sort of the, op the for me, I've noticed 25 minutes is the optimal or, or the maximum for my naps. Otherwise, after 25 minutes, I'll feel groggy for hours after that. So if I wake up within 20 to 25 minutes, based on what my alarm says, I feel great. I feel like, wow, my gosh, I feel like a different person. And I'll give you an example. My wife is, this, is probably like a lot of you. She is intuitive. She is very uh, unstructured. And um, I started making her wake up after. I, I, she, she sometimes feels, uh, she's a night owl, probably like some of you too. She goes to sleep at 2 a.m. in the morning. That's normal. I go to sleep, you know, disciplined at 10.30 p.m. every night. So she's, she's unstructured like a lot of you. She is undisciplined like a lot of you. Um, and she falls asleep after dinner, like you know, after dinner, like 8.30 p.m., she'll like nod off and we're watching TV or whatever. And if I let her not, if I let her sleep, she'll sleep till, you know, 10.30 p.m. or whatever, and therefore have, you know, but I make her wake up now after 20 minutes. She wants to keep sleeping. No, no, let's stand up. Let's stand up, you know, lovingly, gently make her stand up and walk around. And then now she's fine. And, and now she realizes, oh, actually 20 minutes is, is a miracle. After 20 minutes, she feels fine and she can actually do things and wrap up for the evening, whatever she needs to do. So it's not, you know, go with the flow is a common misconception. You, you think, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. My flow says this. My flow says that. No, your flow is oftentimes your past programming and your natural human habits that you haven't trained. What is your flow? What is your intuition? What is your guidance? Your guidance and your intuition can either be untrained and really instinctual based on past programming. You think it's your intuition, but it's actually your past programming and your, all the suggestions you've gotten growing up and around you, you think it's your intuition. Or your intuition and your flow and your guidance can actually be trained and grounded and actually spiritual, actually from a higher source. Right. And so I've learned to train my intuition and guidance and flow over the years. And I'll, I'm going to read you this quote from, you know, where, where, by the way, where does go with the flow come from? A lot of people say, well, it probably came from, from people's people uh, very lightly getting in touch with Taoism, the Tao, living in the Tao, going with the flow. Right. Well, you know what? A lot of people don't realize there's a quote from the founder of Taoism. Lao, Lao Zi in the Tao Te Ching, Tao, Tao Te Ching, but in Chinese it's Tao Te Ching. What does this quote say? The, in, translated into English, it says, don't think you can attain total awareness and enlightenment, whole enlightenment, without proper discipline and practice. This is egomania. I'm still reading the quote. Let me start over. The quote says, don't think you can attain total awareness and whole enlightenment 
without proper discipline and practice. This is egomania. Appropriate rituals channel your emotions and life energy toward the light. Without the discipline to practice them, you will tumble constantly backward into darkness." End quote. That's from the founder of Glo Go With Your Flow, Taoism. Living in the Tao, flowing with the Tao, you know, just going, going, walk, you know, just traveling all your life, you know, with the Tao, right? This guy is about proper discipline or gal, whoever wrote the Tao, Tao De Jing. We don't know who Lao Tzu was, right? Could, could have been a, a guy, gal, could have been a community of people. We don't actually know. But they wrote about discipline and practice. That's really what going with the flow means. It's channeling your life energies into a flow toward your purpose. And for many of us, it's going toward the light, light and love and true wisdom. So if you want to learn self-discipline, joyful discipline, gentle discipline, I hope you'll join me for six months. And bit by bit, we will work on it together in a group. There will be a call once a week. And there will be call at different time zones, whether you are in your Europe, Americas, or in Australia, Asia, New Zealand, etc. There is a time that should match you. And you could look at the registration page to see what the times are. And as of this recording, I'm actually uh, planning on adding additional calls for additional coaching and support um, in, about, uh, in about a month from now. When my schedule opens up even more, I'm going to add in more calls for the TLC program. So uh, a couple things, a couple more things I'll say before I end is that remember I said I used to be a rebel at heart. I used to you know, play video games. It, and, and if I were if I were to just allow my my untrained self to go even today, if I allow if I go into my untrained self and just let myself be whatever, follow the flow of my baser instincts, I would be, you know, watching Netflix, playing video games, probably porn and junk food all day long. And my shallow self would say, wow, what a great life. That's what I would do. I'm an addict. I am an addict. It's easy for me to get hypnotized into entertainment and into junk food and into substances, etc. I'm an addict. So I know, I and, and by the way, and, and most of us are, all of us are addicts, not necessarily substances or whatever, but all of us are addicts. And I'll tell you why. It is so easy these days to get hypnotized by social media, by videos, and by other people's requests on your time. Social media is other people's requests on your time online, right? And going to events, fear of missing out, on, oh, so-and-so is launching something. So you guys sign up for something. Even this TLC thing, you don't have to sign up if it's based on FOMO, fear of missing out. I don't want you to do that. I want you to sign up only if you make you sleep on it first. Don't sign up right now. You should sleep on it. Talk with your you know, spouse or partner or whoever. Talk with some friends. Should I sign up for this? I don't want you to sign up unless you've made a genuinely thoughtful and wise decision and commitment to say, I'm going to do this for six months. Okay. Now, so, so I was talking about the, the sort of social hypnosis that all of us are easily uh, addicted to these days from social media, from events, from programs, from courses, and also from the people in your household, the people around you. It's so easy. Oh, you know, you, you you plan on, you know, doing some writing or you plan on making a video, or you plan on launching something or whatever, but oh, so-and-so needs your help. So-and-so wants your help. So you go, oh, it's, it's easier for you to avoid the important things in your business and in your life. And it's, it's actually more pleasant and easier to help put out someone else's fire. Now, if someone literally, your neighbor's house is on fire, you, you should go help, right? But most of our fires are really just someone else's, oh, I need help with this. And it's, they could probably figure it out themselves if you allow them the space to, if you follow your own calendar and, and, and oh, you know, I, I'd love to help you, 
but can I help you after 6 p.m. today when my business day ends, right? So imagine, okay, I want you to imagine a business that has employees and the business tells the employees, oh, go with the flow. Just come in whenever you feel like coming in. If you don't feel like coming, just don't come in, whatever. Just go with the flow. The business would fail. The customers would show up and there would be no employees to help them or it would be really unreliable. Many of us have only one employee in our business, ourselves. And so if you, the most important employee in your business is going with the flow and just doing whatever you feel like, oh, friends want, want to hang out here, I'll hang out with them. Oh, neighbor wants to talk, oh, I'm just going to talk, such a pleasant conversation. Oh my God, I'm going to be late for so-and-so. Oh, I was going to write at this time, but oh, I'm going to have a pleasant conversation with my neighbor. Now, of course, you should love your neighbor, and, and, but maybe plan time to go with them and maybe plan more spaciousness in your day so that you can have that spontaneous conversation with your neighbor. What I'm not saying about a thoughtful life calendar is a structure every 15 minutes you're working on something in your business. You should plan more, and that's what we're going to learn in, in the six-month program. Bit by bit, I will teach you to optimize a calendar so that you can have spontaneous moments as well, right? But the key still is this. Things are intentional and thoughtful rather than just the whims of your neighbor, your friends, your family. They need you for this or that, you know, or yourself. Oh, I feel like doing this right now. Oh, I feel like doing that right. I'm just going to every day. I'm just following my whims left and right. I'm going to check my email and then 45 minutes go by. You should, of course, clear your email, but it should be a set time of the day that you actually thoughtfully structure so that nothing else in your day falls through the cracks. Another analogy I'll, I'll, I'll say, and, and then I can end this video, is it's like rain. Rain can be either a wonderful gift from the heavens, from Mother Earth, wonderful gift to water your garden. Or if rain is not channeled properly, right, it will either go somewhere else and your garden will, will turn dry. Or if it's not protected properly, your garden's not protected properly, the rain can wash everything away and you'll be left with nothing. So your life energy, your rebelliousness, your, your rebelliousness is also your genius. It's also your creativity. Your energy and your time is like rain. And if you don't channel it properly to water your garden strategically and to protect your garden, your garden is basically the design of your business time and your life time, okay? If you don't channel the, your energy and your time to water your, your, your garden, you won't have your garden provide the vegetables and fruits that allow your life to, to sustain and to thrive. So TLC, Thoughtful Life Calendaring, is basically the irrigation system for your rain, your energy, your rebelliousness, your creativity, your genius, to channel it, to structure it, so that, wow, it's really being empowered toward your purpose. And so, like I said, I used to be a rebel. I hate structure, I hate constraints, I hate constriction. Everything has to be just go with the flow. I used to be like that. And then as I, as I matured, I realized, oh my God, I'm not meeting my goals or I'm getting stressed out a lot. I'm putting out fires all the time, going from this fire to that fire, to this problem, to that problem, to this person's needs to, oh, I feel like doing this. Everything was so, and I wasn't getting enough sleep. I wasn't taking care of myself well enough. So then I made a commitment to say, wait a second, let me now learn what self-discipline really means to do it gently, to do it joyfully. And so over years, I learned, I learned, and I, of course, I created a system along with that. And that's what I've been helping clients with for years now as well. So that's, so basically what's happened now with applying the TLC system to my life over the past seven years, my life has been an increasingly become like heaven. It's been every year, gratefully, my business has been growing in the last seven years. Every year, my business has been growing. And you see me. You see me constantly launching this or that. I mean, you're, you're, you're like saying, mercy, George. <laughs> yet you're launching yet another thing. But you're just consuming my content and my thing. I have to think about it. I have to prepare for these things, right? You think you have to, you know, 
consume them is taking time, but I have to prepare. I have to prepare hours for every hour of course that I deliver to you. I have to prepare for hours, right? So <laughs> if you think you don't have the time, think about me. I have to prepare all these things for hours. And so I, my life has become really balanced over the last seven years. Um, I'm able to launch all these different things. And still, I'm a solopreneur. I don't have an assistant. The only assistant I have is my calendar and my to-do list. That's very well prioritized and structured. And that's what I want for you as well. And that's what I'll coach you into as well in this program, to have your assistant and your to-do list be your calendar. It'd be your, assist, uh, your calendar and to-do list be your assistant, not your boss. It's not a prison. Having a structure is not a prison. It's liberation. If you understand how to have an optimal life structure that includes plenty of self-care, plenty of play, plenty of rest, plenty of family time, plenty of time with friends and with your neighbors and with fun and with all that stuff. That, of course, is the foundation. And then, of course, you need enough time for your business as well. And in the program, we'll talk about, well, how should you structure your business time? What makes sense to go first and second and third? So that's part of it as well. So I want, just like I have been able to create gratefully for myself, a heavenly life, you know, that where I get to work on the things I do. I, I love my work. I have plenty of clients and students and a waiting list, in fact. But that's what I want for you as well. Now, six months, I'm not, the, the promise is not to have a, a waiting, you know, if your business is just starting, I can't promise you six months later, you're going to have a waiting list of clients and students or whatever. But the promise, the promise, of course, is for me to deliver the best that I can in these six months designed to help you create an optimal structure for your business and for your life. A calendar and a to-do list, which after six months, you go, wow, I love this. It's not only after six months, like you love this, but you've been implementing it bit by bit so that you can see how it's all coming together. And you're like, my life is so balanced now with work, of course, with work, joyful work, joyful productivity, but also with self-care, which is actually the foundation and with rest, well, rest and self-care is one and with family time and with fun, with hobbies, with whatever else you want to add in that that's important to you. Anyway, so I hope that this is inspiring for you. And if you uh, would like to join us, um, the link is somewhere in the notes of this video. Uh, but if you want to type it in, it's georgecow.com, G-E-O-R-G-E-K-A-O.com slash TLC, georgecow.com slash TLC. And I'll end by saying this. When you realize that you are the one getting in your own way from achieving your ideal life and your ideal business, it is incredibly empowering when you get that resistance out of the way and you now have a structure, it's genuine self-empowerment. You realize, oh my gosh, there's nothing I can't accomplish. Now that I have finally created a beautiful, empowered relationship with my calendar, I'm no longer resisting Oh, it says to write at 2 p.m. Oh, I don't want to, I don't feel like writing. You've overcome that resistance. You've learned how to overcome that resistance. And you've, of course, figured out how to, at what time of the day and week is your optimal writing time, for example, if you write or make videos or launch things or, you know, do outreach or do your bookkeeping or do whatever it is in your, in your business and in your life. You've learned to structure your calendar, your to-do list in a prioritized and reasonable way. And you've learned how to approach each event, each appointment with yourself with integrity and with joy, and thereby producing an abiding sense of fulfillment. So I hope this inspires you, whether you join us or not. I really wish for you this abiding sense of joyful success, having created an optimal structure for yourself, whatever that means for you. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, and I'm sure I'll see some of you in the TLC program. Talk to you later.